So moving on now from exothermic and endothermic reactions, we're going to talk about um, some of the ways we calculate quantities of energy. Now we're going to be seeing these two symbols. And uh, for our purposes, for the things we do, these are going to be the same. And so when you see this, this is actually uh, a Q. Let's see, looks like I need to get a pen. What color have I got here? White? That's good, that's what we want. When you see this Q, and I wish it looked more like a Q, there we go. When you see this Q, you need to think, ah, that is heat. Remember, heat that is flowing from some area that is hot towards some area that is not as hot. And when you see this delta, I hope you automatically think to yourself, that means a change in something. And then we have this H. And what this H is, is something called enthalpy. And if you want to know more about enthalpy, spend some time reading page 236 in your textbook or look it up online. So a short quiz for you. If energy and enthalpy are somewhat synonymous, which of these is endothermic and which is exothermic? We're going to be looking here at um, a couple of problems and a couple of rules. Now here we have um, methane or natural gas right here. That's the CH4. And uh, we have that the combustion of methane written out here. And we were given in this problem um, that if we had a 5.8 gram sample, and we know something about the delta H of this reaction. Now this is the change in energy for this reaction uh, as it is written. And I kind of... Um, Yeah, I'm kind of going to get rid of this uh, per mole because uh, there are going to be times later when we may not wish it was there. Uh, well, we'll leave it there for now. Okay. So, um, we notice that this, of course, is going to release heat and light when we burn this. And so that change in enthalpy is a negative number because it's an exothermic reaction. So we're going to start with the 5.8 grams of methane, and we're going to convert that to moles. So we moved here from grams to moles, a process that you're very familiar with. And now we can use this enthalpy of the reaction to calculate how many kilojoules of energy are either released or absorbed. Um, now, it's easy to miss, of course, that this has a negative sign in front of it because it's up here. We've wrote, written that here. And, but most of the time, you want to stop and think to yourself, is this reaction going to produce or release energy or require energy? And check and make sure you have the sign correct. Now, notice here, we haven't got the sign. We've missed it. Be sure that you have the sign because every measurement of energy has three parts, a unit, a number, and a direction. In this case, the direction shows that the reaction is exothermic. And uh, hopefully this makes sense to you that if we have uh, 5.8 grams right here, this is a little less uh, well, let's see, maybe not. It's very close to a third of a mole. So we're pretty close to a third of this um, amount of energy that's released. A couple of enthalpy rules. This thing called enthalpy um, for a reaction, if we reverse the enthalpy, excuse me, if we reverse the reaction, the enthalpy, the magnitude, stays the same, but the sign changes. So here we're taking hydrogen gas like you might have in a test tube and you burn it and you hear a little boop. Well, 
that releases, if we have one mole of hydrogen, that releases 242 kilojoules per mole. So the change in enthalpy for that reaction is negative 242 kilojoules per mole. If we reverse that reaction, maybe we take this water and we have to run an electrical current through it and carry out electrolysis, and we get hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Well, notice that that has a change in enthalpy that's positive, and the only thing um, that's different is the sign. If we reverse the reaction, we just change the sign. Another rule is this. If we have a reaction and we double that reaction by placing a 2 in front of this, here I think it would be really appropriate to get rid of the mole sign. Um, we, um, if we double that reaction, we double the amount of energy that's either released or taken in. And um, this equation you'll see on your equation sheet for the AP chemistry test. And we can use this um, concept of um, enthalpies of formation of reactants and products to calculate the enthalpy of almost any reaction, as long as you can look up this delta HF naught where this not symbol right here, or this degree sign looking thing, that simply says this reaction occurs under standard conditions. This occurs under standard conditions. Now keep in mind that standard conditions is not the same as STP, not the same as standard conditions because standard conditions were um, established as room temperature, not zero degrees Celsius. So um, room temperature is considered to be 25 degrees Celsius. So that is uh, the temperature of standard conditions. One atmosphere is still the pressure of standard conditions. This F of formation, this is the formation of the compound from its uh, elements in their standard state. That's what the enthalpy of formation is. And we have a table of those in the back of our book. Uh, there are some rules, though, that are really useful to remember. They pull this one on you all the time on the AP test. If there's an AP test question that has this concept, you will need to know this. That the standard enthalpy of formation, delta HF naught, for an element in its standard state is equal to zero. Now the standard state for oxygen is O2. If you um, have a sample of, of oxygen in its naturally occurring state, it's going to be O2 gas. That has a standard enthalpy of formation of zero. But the standard enthalpy of formation of ozone here is not zero because ozone is not the standard state of oxygen. And uh, that's as far as we're going to go for this video right now. So.